Hello everybody, this is David again with another Verilog video. This time I'm going to be using two different FPGAs. I've got the Basis 3 here on the left and the Nexus video over here on the right. And I always wanted to do a project where to see if you could communicate data between FPGAs or use one FPGA to drive another. So that's what this is, it's just a test. So I have a RAM instantiated or implemented on this FPGA on the basis three um, and I have a ROM over here and then I also have a control unit on this that's going to um, and I have four bits of address to read from the ROM here and then display the ROM data on, the, on four of these LEDs there's only four bits of data uh, that address is also coming out and driving the RAM on here. There's also a write enable signal that's going to drive over here to, and then the data coming over to be written into the RAM. And then there's a state machine on here that runs through a program that reads the ROM, writes the RAM, and then will read the data on the, from the RAM on these LEDs and you'll see the LEDs corresponding. So let me take you over to the code. All right, in Vivado Design Suite, here is the only Verilog module. It's just the RAM and we have the constraints. So here's the RAM right here. Um, just a simple RAM. We have a write, um, well, the sync in. I called it sync in. There was an issue with assigning the PMOD, the clock name, but whatever. So I just changed the name. Um, this is the write enable the address coming in, the data coming in, the four bits of data and the four bits of data going out that will drive the LEDs. Here's how we create a RAM. So we basically have a four bit register times 16 times. Cause there's 16, well, zero to 15 is 16. Um, so always that the sync in, which is like a clock, which will be the one Hertz clock. If right enable the RAM, that is the address that's coming in um, the data in gets set into that address and then the data out is just an assign reading from the RAM address and that's available on the output all the time whether write enable is enabled or not. Here's the XDC. Um, we just need the four LEDs for the data in the RAM. Um, some, some P mods. I'm using JB for four bits for the address four bits for the data in that sync in signal and then that write enable signal and now i'll take you over to oh i already ran the synthesis implementation and i went into settings you can go in there and go under bitstream and then have it generate a raw bit file and then you go into the folder in the runs folder in the project folder and you grab that bit file and you put it onto a thumb drive which is what i did and so that way I can program the basis three um, standalone, just powering it. And then I can program the uh, Nexus video. So I'm going to go over to the Nexus video project, which is the ROM and the control. So you'll see in the left window over here is the module hierarchy. I'll go ahead and open up all these modules and we'll go through them. Okay. Now I'll go through. So here's the one Hertz generator. It takes the hundred megahertz clock from the Nexus. Um, there's a 26 bit counter that can hold this value right here. Um, here's the toggle register we use for the one hertz signal. So in the logic down here, the counter is going to count. It's going to increment by one until it gets to this value here. And then it's going to reset to zero and the output is going to toggle the output register. And then we'll just tie in the output wire to that register, which is for the one hertz signal. Here's the ROM, excuse me. It's just a four bit address. You, whatever address you input here, you will read out data at that register address. And there's four bits of data. So, and here's how we set it up. I populated it with data um, to count 
So each address is in hex, it's four bits, and then so um, it's going to count from 15 down to zero is how this is set up as the address counts up. Now here's the ROM control. It's going to take in that clock one hertz. We're going to have the one hertz for demonstration purposes so we can see what's happening. Otherwise, what would happen would be too fast if we use the 100 megahertz. Um, but we have the 4-bit address as the output because we're going to use an address register here, which is a counter, and we're going to tie in this address output to this counter. And right here is the control logic for the counter. It's just going to continue counting up, and it's going to wrap around. It's just going to be an infinite counter um, <clears throat> by this clock 1 hertz signal. And then I implemented a state machine uh, with three parameters, three states. So we have a state reg of two bits to cover three states. Um, there's also the register for the write enable, which is controlled down here in the next state logic, along with the state register. So every pause edge of that one hertz clock, if we're going to start the in read ROM state. So if it's in the read ROM state, once that counter gets to 15, we're going to transition to the write RAM state, in which case we'll enable the RAM to be written, which will go out of the Nexus video and into the basis 3 RAM, and enable the RAM to start reading. As this counts through from 0 to 15 again, the data in the ROM will be output to the input data in of the RAM, and then we'll go once that finishes we'll go to the read ram state where i'll turn off the write enable and then we'll just read out the data in the ram and we hope that the data that we stored in the rom gets transferred over to the ram and we can see it on the leds so here's the top for the nexus all the interface here here's the input it's just going to be a clock input everything else is going to be driven inside and then output it to the basis three. So we'll have that one hertz signal to go over to the clock for the RAM, the data going to the um, RAM, the write enable to the RAM, the address to the RAM, and then the four LEDs on the Nexus itself so we can read the data in the RAM, or the ROM, excuse me, the data that will be transferred from the ROM to the RAM. Here's some internal wires, instantiate all the modules, connect all the wires up, and then connect all the outputs up here to um, drivers that are coming from these modules here. Uh, I went ahead and ran the synthesis implementation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the hardware manager, connect the Nexus video, turn it on. There we go, it's on. I'm going to go ahead and open the target. Now I'm also going to, I got the basis 3 power through USB and it'll register on here too. So I don't want to try and have it auto open the target and try and open the Nexus and the or the basis 3. I don't want it to get confused. So now that it's open, I'll hit program device. But before I program it, I'm going to wait. I'm going to turn on the basis 3 and then I'm going to hit the program button because I'm programming it from a USB stick. Um, that has the bit file on it and there's also a jumper on the basis 3 right next to where you put in the USB in between that and the program button where you have to change the jumper to USB so I went ahead and I programmed the the basis 3 programming is done and I'm gonna go ahead and program the Nexus video and then I'll show you it working Okay, so now you can see the LEDs on the Nexus. They're counting down. They went through all the RAM. And now the write enable is enabling the RAM, and you can see the LEDs light up over here in the RAM. And the, the data corresponds to the same data that was in the ROM over here on the Nexus video. So now it's just running through the addresses. There is a little glitch there. If you notice that when it's 15, all four LEDs are lit here, there's only two LEDs lit over here. And I don't understand why it wouldn't be the same data, but every other address has the same data. Now, when you connect um, 
from FPG to FPGA and you're going from PMOD to PMOD, you need to make sure that you connect the ground from this PMOD to the ground of that PMOD. And you never want to connect the VCCs together because then you can do some damage to either board or both boards. You don't know, just don't do it. But there you have it, the test is complete, it's working, and uh, thanks for watching.